Hi, everybody, and welcome to episode six of season two of the Shiro's Project. I'm Nishka Iyer, the executive director for the Shiro's Project, and I'm joined today by Nikita Gupta, co-founder and CTO at Simba. Nikita, welcome. I'm so excited to have you here today. Thank you, Nishka. It's been such an honor to be here and just get to connect with the community and share more about my story. Yeah, well, it's always so impressive for me to see women in my age group and young women in general be successful in the tech world. And you certainly have been graduating from Cornell, founding your own company, making Forbes 30 under 30. But before we get into any of that, I'd just love to hear a little bit about your background and how you got to where you are today. Of course. So super windy, long kind of journey, but I guess I'll start off with um, right before college. So um, I grew up in a family where, in, where my parents are both in technology. My dad's also an entrepreneur. So had a very entrepreneurial forward focused mindset while growing up. Um, I cooked a lot. I cook a lot for my family and my friends. And when I was in middle school and high school, my father actually asked me to figure out a way to incentivize his passion. Um, they weren't so keen on sending me to the Culinary Institute for studies. In fact, they wanted me to try to get to a good college growing up in New Jersey and focus on something like either in technology and engineering or doctor or lawyer, you know, typical brown parent type of type of degree that they hope that their kids to obtain. But anyways, um, I was cooking a lot and I wanted, I ended up creating a website called nickatthiskitchen.com. And that was my first exposure to computer science. Um, nonetheless, you know, coding a website is nothing like what they teach you in college in a CS degree, but it was my first exposure to, wow, I can mix technology with cooking and actually create a site out of it that is helping me showcase my recipes with friends and family around the world. So I created the website, um, had a lot of fun with it in high school, went to Cornell to study computer science and also did a minor in entrepreneurship and business where I got to take a lot of cool classes outside of the typical uh, computer science and engineering curriculum. And um, when I was a student, I had internship experiences at startups, um, worked at even Martha Stewart Living Omni Media, then also interned at large corporations like Apple and Bank of America. And when I graduated from school, I decided that I wanted to give the startup world a try. I was craving more technical freedom and then joined a startup in DC as a software engineer and one of the only female engineers in that team. Um, really awesome experience. I learned so much from all of my mentors and the other leaders at the organization. And in DC, um, I bumped into my co-founder Ava at a woman in tech conference. Um, she was wearing this beautiful blazer. I went up to her and complimented her on that blazer. We struck conversation and she shared her story and this idea for what is now Simba. And at first I started helping out part-time and then eventually jumped the ship, decided to do this full time. Um, I was really passionate about using technology and doing something with it to make an impact in this future of work and workforce space. And yeah, I've been um, at Simba since and just really excited to be growing the organization, working with an awesome team and making an impact with our work. Well, wow, that is a crazy impressive background. I'm not at all surprised that you've been so successful. But if we could just take a few steps back, would you be able to explain a little bit about what Simba does and how the idea behind it grew into what it is today? Of course. So Simba is not for the Lion King. We're actually for <laughs> symbiotic relationships. Um, the the um, idea stemmed from um, my co-founder Ava being one of the first remote interns for the Department of State about a decade ago. And this was when she was in college um, in Arizona and she was able to get this really impressive internship experience with the government from working at her desk in Arizona. So we got really excited about the fact that students from around the world should be able to open up their computer and intern for their dream companies, no matter where they are, what they're doing or where they're like located essentially. Um, for both of us, internships had such a dramatic impact to our career. For me personally, it taught me what type of work environment I want, what type of responsibilities I want to have in my you know, dream role, and taught me what I was going to expect out of a professional working career. So um, we originally started off with creating a marketplace where we would connect students with organizations that were offering remote internships. And actually from there, when we started talking with internship program coordinators at every, you know, a lot of hundreds of companies, including small companies that were startup size, all the way to large fortune 50 organizations. 
And we learned that it wasn't just finding interns that was a problem, it was actually managing the interns. So that's where we started to do a lot of research, brainstorm ideas, talk to HR leaders, and understand how to build out a platform to help them manage their in-person interns as well as their remote internships. When we were trying to sell this idea in like 2019, it was very difficult. Um, customers, you know, organizations didn't think that remote internships was a, you know, it was still five to 10 years out in the future. And having a platform to manage the interns was something that was nice to have, but not an urgent need for them. We definitely went through a lot of ups and downs, mostly downs in you know 2019. But um, at the end of 2019, we got another opportunity to take a stab at Simba and you know really focus on what made us passionate about it. So again, we went back to um, at that point we had a lot of students that were interested in remote internships, so we wanted to match them with really cool companies, and we were able to do that successfully for quite a few internship opportunities. And then as soon as COVID hit, companies were thinking about, okay, we risk our reputation and cancel our program, or do we learn how to adopt virtually? Mm -hmm. And that's where a lot of companies came back to us. Our product that we had already built, like found a market to fit in. And ever since then, we've just been on running on like thousands of miles per hour since. Yeah. So it's been a really exciting journey since that started. Yeah, I can imagine. I mean, I've been looking for internships through COVID and I can definitely see such a huge value in a company like this. So I'm so glad I learned about it because I can totally benefit from Simba. Um, and so moving, switching gears a little bit, I know that being a young entrepreneur in general comes with a bunch of challenges when you're trying to navigate a world that wasn't really made for you to succeed. But for you being a young female South Asian entrepreneur must come with added challenges of its own. So I was wondering if you could speak to that a little bit, um, some of the challenges that you faced, how you've overcome them and learned from them. I think that the Shiro's Project viewers and listeners could really benefit from hearing from your experience. Definitely. I mean, there are so many different challenges. I've been very lucky to have a supportive family and a network of friends and mentors who have been able to pick me up and get me back to, you know, on the path to just what I'm on right now. But um, definitely as a South Asian and woman of color, it's very hard to have your voice heard. So now more and more, there are a lot of um, venture firms, for example, that are investing in diverse founders. And it's really, it's cool to get connected with them and share your story and share why you're passionate about the business that you're building. But before that, I mean, just people didn't believe us, especially um, we're tackling a market where we have leaders at companies that are much older and much more experienced than we are. And when they look to two young girls, that two women of color that are trying to sell a software and selling a software business is a behemoth of a challenge in itself. It's not like we're creating some consumer product in like the beauty industry or in the food industry, selling a software where you not only have to get approval from the internship program coordinators, but it has to go all the way to some of the C-suite executives, um, especially in the HR field and then procurement and legal team. There's so much that goes into it that, it's definitely a challenge, but I think every experience has just taught us so much more in addition to that. Um, also, as a young founder, um, one of the biggest pieces of advice that I um, like to tell you know my fellow peers is that like start a startup when you know you're ready to commit your full time time to it. Um, I was lucky that I had a I had one year's worth of a full time software engineering job where I was able to use my savings to help me support the entrepreneurial life. Mm -hmm. um, I had my parents who let me come back home for a few months to live with them. Granted that I still had to pay for all of my fun and my shopping and everything, but you know, making sure that you're in a financial position to put yourself to launch a business is really important. So whether you have to work part-time on your business while you're still working your full-time job to make ends meet, um, don't be afraid to do that and always you know, join your full time when it requires your full time energy. And when you know that you can make that jump. Mm -hmm. That was one of the biggest challenges that I had, I basically depleted my savings at one point, And it was um, a struggle to be able to like, you know, make some ends meet. And I learned a lot about I mean, there was there was like a point in my life where I had to figure out what to do and like make a hard decision, but was able to, you know, get some support from my family, 
um, and was able to strive through. Luckily, that was a time when Simba also started making revenue. So we were able to, you know, support our team and go from there. But definitely a lesson that I've learned is like, make sure you're not beating a dead horse and you're able to, you know, work on your startup that is a revenue generating business. Otherwise, you have to have an alternative way to make ends meet. Yeah, that's great advice. I feel like so many people, when they get an idea, they just want to go right into it. They don't really think about the other factors that are super important, like financials and what are you going to do if it doesn't work out. So that's great advice. Um, but now on a more positive note, what have been some of your greatest rewards from starting Simba and from getting yourself into the tech entrepreneurial world, if you can share that with us? Definitely. I think the biggest um, and best part about Simba is our team. Like our team, we're super diverse. We come with different perspectives, different ethnic backgrounds, um, different types of life experiences. Um, it makes just working and waking up every morning to work on what we're believing in really that much more exciting. Um, it's really important to build a great team of folks who are smarter than you, who are coming with different skill sets. So that way they offer their perspectives to grow the business. Um, in addition to just, you know, being an entrepreneur, I think I've learned a lot about time management and what it takes to, you know, like manage multiple roles at a company. I am the CTO and co-founder, but I also get to play a role in operations or in sales and business development as well as customer success. So when I compare, you know, what I'm doing now to what I could have been doing as a software engineer, I'm really grateful that I've been able to learn so much and what it takes to launch a business. So I'm not just you know, sitting behind a computer and coding all day long, but I'm actually getting to interact with customers or bring on potential leads to become paying customers at Simba and just learning so much more from there. And then lastly, also the types of people that I've met, I've met some incredible mentors um, who have done this before, who are um, you know, other fellow entrepreneurs too, who are also going through difficult journeys with us. And, um, it's been really incredible to just learn from fellow peers and mentors. Yeah, I can imagine what, I'm just curious when you were working as a software engineer, did you ever think that you would become a full-time entrepreneur at some point? I know you minored in entrepreneurship, so you must've had some idea, but did you ever think it would be so soon? I didn't think that it would be so soon, but I always had this entrepreneurial like drive and hunger for it that. I knew that it wasn't like far off or it wasn't like, it was, you know, inevitably going to happen. Mm -hmm. So the fact that it happened really soon is really exciting too, but I was definitely looking for it at that time. Um, but because I was working at a startup and that too, like a really young startup at that time, I also like got the taste of what it's like to be like a leader at an organization. Like I worked firsthand with the co-founder and CTO there um, I was in a very small team and we were launching products like very quickly and it was a super fast paced environment, which is what I loved. Mm -hmm. So having that experience like taught me a lot about when it came to starting Simba with Ava. Got it. Um, and what are some ways that you take time for yourself? Because even just from our quick conversation so far, I can tell that you're a super busy person and you're always on the move, but how have you been able to make time for yourself and to relax? So it's definitely important to take some time for yourself every single day. I have a rule of thumb where I spend at least 30 minutes doing something that I like. So whether that's FaceTiming my friends, um, cooking, I love cooking. I try to cook as many dinners or lunches as I can for myself. It's a way to give yourself a break. Also, the beauty of COVID is that it has taught us that we can work remotely and work from anywhere we want. So I, as an entrepreneur, I don't have a specific routine every day. Like there are days where I'm working till like 4 a.m. There are days where I start work at 6 a.m. There are days where I wake up at nine o'clock and don't start work until like 11 a.m. Like the schedule is always different. But um, what I really liked, what I find really important for any entrepreneur is time management and making sure that you're putting time for yourself. Because I feel like when you take breaks to do something, it gives you a lot of creative energy that makes you come back to work being even more productive and more creative. So um, it's, I make it, you know, I make like my friends and my family are really important to me. So I make it a priority, you know, to balance work as well as my personal life with the relationships that I have with others too. Yeah. That's Otherwise that's, 
yeah and it's very easy to get sucked into a hole where you just like distance yourself from everyone because all you want to focus is on work but when I've seen firsthand is that when I give my brain a little bit of a break it makes me come back more productive and more energized yeah that makes a lot of sense I mean even in college I'm already seeing some of that so I can't even imagine what it's like in you know when you're running your own company um, but that's great to hear that you're able to find that balance. Um, so that wraps up all the questions I had for you. But talking to you, I have one last like fun little question. Um, because you said you are so into cooking and you made your own website. I'm just curious if you can give me your top three recipes that you've found. <laughs> um, I have a mango mousse recipe on my website, which is delicious. Um, it's had over 10,000 views on YouTube. Um, super, super delicious recipe, um, for a yummy mango dessert. I really, I make really good pizzas and I also make really good fish. So tilapia, there's Indian style tilapia that my mom taught me. That's really yum. And, um, uh, pizzas as well. So I have this penne al vodka pizza pot. So pasta pizza where you make penne al vodka pasta and you put that on top of a pizza and it's just oh, two sounds... great heavens in one bite. <laughs> Um, well, thank you so much. I definitely have to try out some of those, but thank you so much for a great conversation. I feel like I still have so much more to learn from you, so I'd love to connect again, but thanks so much for being here today and for sharing your story. Um, I am definitely going to use Nimba to find my next internship, although I hope not everything is remote, but, you know, um, yeah. so thank you so, so much for being here and for everything that you said. Um, so much advice and great learnings. And so, yeah. Of course. Thanks so much for having me here. For anyone who wants to learn more about Simba, check it out at symba.io. And I'm always available to connect via LinkedIn as well. Yeah. And Nikita's info and link to the website will also be on the Shiro's Project website for anybody who would like to connect or who wants more information. So thank you, Nikita, again. And I hope you have a great rest of your day. Of course. Thank you. You too.